Yo, 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 so I'm back with it again with another tutorial. Today we're going to be going over scenes, well, basic scenes, and then as you progress in tutorials, I get more advanced, but definitely going over the basics. So first off, make sure you check the description and get the uh, scene in the required files uh, zip and open up tutorial start. All right, once you have that, you're greeted with your character. First thing you want to do as always is import the textures. So select the torso, click new, and rename it to whatever you feel is organized. So for me, character works just fine. And then let's go ahead and drag out a new screen at the top left. So let's just click and drag. And then let's open up our shader editor. And then let's press N to hide this little node thing right here. And then let's press Shift A to open up image texture. So put that in. And now we can load in our texture. So open desktop and get the night texture or whatever you import it. The night texture is in the scene file. So yeah. And then drag that into the base color. If you don't see anything, then at the top right here, just uh, scroll the middle mouse over. So middle mouse click and right here under the drop down, make sure you're in texture viewport shading. All right. After that, you can press Shift A, get another image texture. Wait, nope, I'm actually incorrect. Press Shift A and get a bump map. Let's plug that into the normal. And then we can plug this into a black and white channel hold on so press shift a look for rgb to bw basically all bump maps are written in black and white so it will kind of help out a bit to convert it to black and white so just plug that into the color and then plug that value into the uh height all right and that's kind of the basic for now let's go ahead and close this window so just click at the top and just drag over and then let's select everything but the torso. So go one and then shift select. And then press the torso last and then press control L and choose materials. So everything now has the same material. Once that's done, you wanna go ahead and load in whatever helmet you have. So for now, let's go ahead and hide this, okay? So select hierarchy and hide. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> Just select it all and press H then, press H. File, let's go to import Wavefront OBJ and let's load in the night OBJ. And as you can see, nothing is separated. So that's very bad. Whoops, don't mind this. Yeah, that's very bad, so press X to delete. Let's file, import Wavefront OBJ again. And on geometry right here, make sure it's split by group then import and then you want to delete everything but the helmet so press and then press X to delete and then we can get the head under here delete and then we can press alt H to unhide everything and then we select the helmet again and press Z to go into wireframe and select the head then press ctrl P to parent it and what that does, it's, it makes the helmet part of the rig. So if I was to select the head and then press R, it's now part of it. Select this, press R, it's part of it. All right. Now that that's done, we kind of want to create the basic plane. Actually, no, no, no. Let's uh, import our sword, okay? So this will be in the description. Shout out to fluke your jupiter fluke your jupiter and uh you want to go ahead and download this okay so just click download 3d model and then there and then once you unshacked it and all this stuff make sure it's on your desktop or whatever when you're ready click file import and choose fbx because it's in the fbx file so click your armor and source and then the arming sort and import fbx now, as you can see, it's pretty small, so just reselect it and then press S. So, whatever size you feel is right, let's drag it up and position it. Let's press R, Z, and press 
90. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. <laughs> Excuse me, burped. And then let's uh, drag it up some and just keep rotating it until it fits into the hand. That's clearly too big, so put it like this. And then let's go ahead and import its texture. So let's go ahead and open up our shader editor again and go into shader and then press shift A, same process as before. Image texture, go ahead and open and on arming sword textures. The albedo, anything that says albedo is always the diffuse channel. It's always going to be the color channel whatever so let's open that and let's put that into the base color and as you can see there we go let's go ahead and select this and just press shift d then let's open up another image so just click the folder and let's find our metalness let's open that let's put that into metallic let's shift d again on that and let's open up a new texture and let's get the normal okay for the metalness and the normal, where it says color space, make sure it's set to non-color data and non-color data. Don't ask why, just always do that. <laughs> and then let's put the color channel of the normal into the color channel right here. And then I think there was another channel, the roughness. So shift D again, open and look for the roughness. And this will go into the roughness slot. Let's also put that at non-color. And let's see how this looks in our shading view. So over here, right here, all right? All right, there we go. Nice and clean, nice and metal. Yep, looks just fine. And that's, that's kind of how you import textures a little bit, PBR textures, metalness goes to metallic, roughness goes into roughness. And there'll be other times where it says specular and specular goes into specular, of course or glossiness and that's how you do that and let's see what's next all right so now what she wants to do is go back to regular shading select this and select this okay with the hand and press ctrl p to parent and then if you rotate the hand ever ooh, that's uh that's odd i must have not parented the hand so Select the hand, then press the arm, then press Control P to object. Oof, I don't feel like fixing that right now, so just skip it. Uh, just press Control P to that. And now if we rotate the arm, as you can see, that goes with it. Control S to save your uh, scene. Now, if you don't want to, um parent it say if you just want to freely move it just press alt p and clear parent and then when you're done posing and stuff you can set that up now let's go ahead and create our plane and stuff so press shift a choose plane and let's scale this pretty big all right that's fine right there now let's go into uh edit mode by pressing tab and press right click and press subdivide and let's put the number of cuts to 10 then let's subdivide again all right let's uh bring it up one more to two there we go all right then let's go into sculpting okay we're not going to do any real sculpting we're just going to make this surface a bit more uppity uppity so under symmetry let's uncheck this and then let's kind of just click okay simple as that kind of make it a bit hilly and bumpy not make it completely flat and then press F to lower the size and then let's look at this from a bottom perspective and that should be fine right there actually let's bring it up a bit more All right, yep, that's fine. Then we're done, go back into layout. Now, as you can see, it's pretty flat shading, I guess. So right click and press shade smooth. Select your knight, 
and then under here under R15 basic select hierarchy and just drag up and then press the dot on your uh, numpad the decimal and to zoom forward all right now let's go ahead and import our HDR for lighting so I got this HDR from HDR uh, <laughs> HDRI Haven okay and I got the 4k one get whatever you really want it doesn't matter I don't suggest you go 16k because that's a lot on your system so yeah and then once that's downloaded let's go ahead and open up shader again go to shader editor and under the object let's go to world press shift a image texture and let's open our uh, query alright whoops all right so actually let's not do image texture let's do shift a and environment texture i keep forgetting i always use environment textures for hdrs let's plug that into the uh color and press shift a again and get a mapping node put that into the vector press shift a look for a hold on let me try to remember real quick so it's pretty much just this get a texture coordinate it's very weird <laughs> to be honest I know someone that knows blender oh that's there we go that there we go okay that's straight now All right, and then right here, you can just select your HDR, and there you go. You always use a mapping node, so you can uh, get a, hold on. Let me just check something again. All right. So again, as I was saying, you always use a mapping node so you can rotate and play around with your HDR or whatever. Or any texture in general, you just want to like change the lighting or whatever. So yeah. All right, so now we need to make our ground texture of our snow. So let's see, select your snow plane and press new at the top. Wait, what? Oh, well, it should say new for you at the top, but if it doesn't, just uh, click new over here or whatever. And then press shift A. You don't have to do this, but principal BSDF in surface all right so yeah it should look like this for you okay so you want to get this texture right here i will have it in the description below pretty much pretty cool so if you have a really decent pc you should get the 4k if you have like a little laptop that has like two cores or whatever then you you want to get the 2k don't go above that all right so once that's done let's go ahead and do the same thing we did before Shift A, image texture. And let me see. So the Snow 6 color goes into the color channel. Look for the suffixes. Actually. And displacement. So for displacements, you just want to Shift A, look for displacement. Plug the color into the height and plug this into the displacement. All right, we can also shift a get a bump and plug our displacement into the height and plug that into the normal and also get a normal map because this is a PBR texture so and then let's see shift D again open look for normal and as I said before with our normal maps and pretty much nothing with color make sure it's non-color in your color space non-color plug that into the color and then let's shift d again and open our roughness which will go into the roughness obviously and let me just organize this for myself Yeah. 
Alright, that should be straight. Let me see. Yep. Then you want to select one of these, or just let me see, adding mapping node. Add a texture coordinate. Plug the plug the UV slot into the vector, and then the vector will go into each and every one of these. And basically what this does, it, it controls its howling. So if I scale by three or four on the X and Y, let me scroll over a bit, go into the shading. I go to two and the X and Y, as you can see, it gets smaller or bigger, but three is all right for me or four. Yep, that's fine. And then that's pretty much it for our snow texture. We'll get into the real displacement at the end after we're done with our lighting. So now for lighting. So let's go into our shader editor. I mean, shading mode and let's see. Let me disable this. So as you can see, something is wrong. So let me go back, go into my world editor, shader, world. Okay. Let me try doing it through generated. Oh, whoops. Okay, yeah. So with HDRs, make sure it's generated into the vector, not UV. Okay. Now let's go ahead and set up our camera. So I want mine so like right here. So let's go to Shift A and let's look for a camera. And then let's press Control, Control Alt Zero to put the camera to your current view. Press zero again. And I want to bring the camera back. So go into local, select your camera, bring it back. That should be fine right there. Cool, cool, cool. All right. I'm gonna play around with the, with the um, HDR more, so. Again, this is really, it's not going to be the same as me in terms of your like scene or whatever. So you just want to play to what you, what you feel comfortable with. I like this one right here. So let me close that. Pay attention to where our sun is coming from. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift A and add a sunlight. This just gives us like an extra bit of way to control our lighting. So I'm going to make this in that direction. Maybe bring it over some. And yeah, let me go into editor, I mean shading. Let's go into our light properties and choose use nodes. Let's see how it looks at zero. One, three, four, five. Is there no difference? Yes, there is a difference. All right. Go back to one. All right, that's fine right there. Um, now what we can start doing is 
You know, I'm not that satisfied with the lighting, but it's a pretty decent IMO. Let's maybe bring down our uh, bump strength. So let's go back to Shader Editor. Let's uh, go over here into our bump. Bring it down some. Put it at zero. Let me see. Let me turn off the displacement a bit. All right. Bring this up. All right, that's fine. That works for me right there. Uh, let's see what else. What else can I get? What was I doing? Okay, oh yeah, so we don't really need to do any rim lighting, to be honest. You can, like I explained in my first tutorial, I mean second, just shift A and spam lights around the character, but you don't need to do that for this. It seems pretty decent enough. Back to displacement. So plug that back in. And select our plane. Let's go into our modifiers right here. Let's look for a sub. Wait, whoa. Look for a subdivision surface. Let's uh, uncheck use creases. All right. We should have another option right here. Simple. Quite weird. Let me see if this was it. Okay, so under your feature set, choose experimental. And then go back into your modifiers and choose adaptive. Depending on the quality of your PC, you can bring this up to two or a one. Since I'm recording, I'm gonna put it at one. Pretty much, you can really just leave this as is because it's, it's pretty decent, the standard or whatever. All right. Let's go back into our shader editor and then let's play with the, actually I take that back. There's one thing you have to do, so go back to your image texture. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Go back into your material settings right here. Go under settings and where it says displacement, make sure it's displacement and bump. I'm gonna choose displacement only to be honest. So this is a bit of a problem. So first off, let's go back into our solid mode. Let's select this, press control A, reset its scaling. Then go back into edit mode, press A, press U, press unwrap. And that's how you unwrap it. <laughs> simple, simple, simple. And let's go back into rendered view again. Okay, there we go. Press O to go back into our camera view. And let's see. I mean, as you can clearly see, we have our displacement. Let's, uh, you can play with Catamo Cl Clark or Simple. Like, that's really up to you. I'm going to bring this out more and go back to my shade editor. And in my scale, I'm going to bring it to 0 0.4, 0 0.7. And that's fine enough for me, to be honest. Go back into solid mode. Let me pose my character now. Again, when you're posing, make sure you're in local. Save my scene. All right, let's go back into rendered.
and that's pretty good right there to be honest in terms of basics in terms of scenes so let me select this go into the global press o actually let me go back to our camera view i keep saying o i mean zero okay my bad <laughs> so used to saying o for zero let's go into oh wait now unpress zero and then unpress <laughs> press again whoops uh on your r15 rig let's press select hierarchy then shift d to duplicate and let's just put somebody way in the back or up here is fine changes uh posing Yeah, that's pretty much how you do basic scene rendering in uh, Blender. So uh, let me go back to this site. Pretty much you can just go and just try it all with a bunch of ground textures and just see what you get. So like road. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot to choose from and they're all free. I think I just found out about the sites today and you can try it with HDRs too, just try experiment with every two, ah, all types of lighting, so yeah. And when you're all done and ready to go, make sure under your output properties, it's under 1920x1080, and since you're keeping the background, obviously, uh, you don't have to do RGBA, you can just do RGB. And there's also one thing, let me, uh, under colors, color management in your render properties, linear ACS. Just always choose that, okay? Always choose that. I picked it up. I didn't even know what it meant. I just know to use this all the time, okay? Because some pro said it, aka the Blender Guru guy. So I'm choosing linear ACS because he did it. <laughs> and now it's me telling you to do it. So yeah. That's how you do basic scenes. Uh, and the next one, I'll go more advanced. So yeah, uh, I guess you can say I'm out. I'm, I'm going to make a Discord server for people that have questions and need help. So be looking out in the description for that. All right, I'm going out. Peace. Oh, wait. Again, if you're new to the channel and I didn't go over this before, render, render image. That's how you get your final result. And then when you're done, it should say image and just say this. And I forgot one more thing. Jesus Christ. Uh oh. Did Blender crash? Did Blender crash? Nope. Uh, let's see. What was I looking for? Denoising. If you have a bad PC, well, this doesn't really have, it doesn't really mean you have a bad PC. Just Click denoising, okay, from time to time. For this scene, you may want to go to 1500 samples in your final render. Really depends, but yeah. All right, now I'm actually gone. Peace.